Tuning in, this is Optobotomus Commission with another video review. And today we're gonna and today we're gonna be taking a look at the new Transformers Generation Deluxe Class. Now, a year ago, Hasbro decided that for the first time ever, they were gonna let the fans create their own figure, and this is what we got. They put up a poll asking various questions about what we want, such as the gender, the alt mode, the weapons, uh, the faction, all of that stuff was an option for us, and us as fans made Windblade. And what we decided to do was make a female Autobot that has an alt mode of a VTOL jet. As you can see, you got the, the little blades here that actually do spin, which is really very nice. And she also comes with her signature weapon, which is uh, this little Energon sword, which is something that we also as collectors picked. Really very nice, it has a sheath, comes out really cool purple a translucent bit that comes to the tip and gets clear really nice and then I love how this actually coming in here uh, because I think it looks so wickedly cool the actual center part is also like a little VTOL jet I think that's really very creative I absolutely dig that but as I said the the weapon just sheaths right inside here and then it pegs up here underneath the actual figure and you can pull the thing apart just like so uh, but the thing that does kind of look ugly is the gappiness there I mean you can see that there is a large space it is slightly reduced when you put the weapon uh, right up between here or is that there we go right right between the legs on the underside here it fixes it a little but not as much as I would like but all in all very nice looking now in the upcoming generation line this was the only figure that I was really all that interested in getting the rest are just repaints Combine that with the fact that this was fan created and right now in the IDW comics she has her own series so all that together just really made me pretty excited about this character that we as fans created. Now some of the aspects about her were designer choices, and you'll see that more in the robot mode. But it's just a cool sort of thing that we actually got to create this. And I'm really curious to see what we might do in the future, and how well Hasbro kind of incorporates our thoughts in another figure. But yeah, generally speaking, uh, it's, a, it's a fairly simple dread. She does have a, a landing gear that I didn't fold out. Uh, she has some molded in her legs that you can kind of see right here and then you got the one that folds out So you don't have to just lay her down without any kind of landing gear that is incorporated into the design So very cool now one thing that I will say about the transformation is it's it's fairly unique uh, I, I really actually do dig it. It's not just a simple matter of straighten out the legs and the arms I mean, here's the arms that just kind of rests along the side But there's actually some decent design choices here in how we we make Windblade transform from her jet mode to her robot mode. So to transform her, first if you haven't already done so, go ahead and remove the actual sword from her underside. Just set that off to the side for right now. And then you're sort of loosening things up. This section right here, detach this, fold that out, come around here to the bottom section, take the hands, unpeg those, and just we're going to swivel those out to the side like that. Then take uh, this back section, this whole section here, tabs into the legs, do that there as well and just kind of fold these out just kind of getting them out of the way then you can take this entire lower section rotate this around then take the legs split them apart then this bit right here actually rotates around now it goes that way rotate that around and then fold that down you're actually creating her heel do that on this side as well rotate that now well, i always go the wrong way rotate that down then take this section rotate this and this tabs together with that lower section and now it actually creates her leg keep that straight and there we go squeeze that in there and like i said you're bringing the shin down and then you're creating her entire leg which like i said i think that's really very creative it's it's not just a matter of straightening out her legs i think that's really very cool but uh, once you have that done kind of get these heels out this is kind of a pain but getting her to stand is Sometimes a little bit delicate, but it's not too hard to do. And then take this section, fold this back. You can rotate this all the way back right there. Then bring out her head from the inside here. And then these arms, these collapse up and then fold down like so. So collapse this all the way up, 
just like that, and then bring this back section back in to close the rest of the body. Take these, and then you can position these really how you want. Angle that back, kind of angle that, lift that, angle these back. They're on hinges here too, so and then take these, rotate that up and back like so. Straighten out these arms. Now, one thing I will say is that on mine, because it is a eBay figure, it doesn't have the same quality control that regular retail figures will have. So this one is a little bit loose and a little floppy and doesn't really secure all that well here in the shoulders. As you can see, just a little tug can bring them out. So hopefully that's something that isn't a problem on the rest of the re retail figures. And then you can angle these little shoulder bits up just like so, and then try and angle this back as much as I can. But uh, once you're all done, there you have Windblade in her robot mode. Now, one thing that does kind of suck is she is kind of back heavy, so you can keep her legs straight. The problem, though, is it's very back heavy, so she won't be able to stand very well. So you do have to sort of chicken leg her legs a bit here to create a more stable hold for her. But once you get that done, this is a really cool looking figure. And here in robot mode is where we're seeing a lot of the designer's actual influence, specifically in her Japanese look. You can see that a very nice paint job is done. I mean, the head sculpt just in general is really quite impressive looking, but the paint is also wonderfully done. You got a very nice amount of gold. You got some blue, red, silver, black. I mean, this thing, if we've ever complained about paint applications on a figure, this figure right here really makes up for a lot of those sort of complaints. This looks terrific. Now, some people aren't necessarily fans of the design, but I think it comes across nicely. The only thing that I do not like in terms of the engineering is I really wish that these heels could click back a little bit further so you don't necessarily have to chicken leg her. Uh, that's one aspect that drives me nuts. It's one thing to have that incorporated into the design, but for me, I really think that that's the ugliest part about it. Uh, it. It would look a little bit nicer if I could get her to stand up straight without falling back. And you could do it if these little heels sort of went back a little bit further. Now you can see you can do it, but I'm leaning her forward. If you straighten her out, it's, oh, well, that's actually not too bad, but I mean, it's very difficult to do. Uh, it requires a very subtle hand, and I, I don't really have it. I'm a bit of a ham hand. So you do have to sort of chicken leg her to get her, well, and that didn't even work very well, to get her to stand. Th that's very unfortunate because it makes an otherwise really cool looking figure very difficult to pose. In addition to that, like I said, this is a little bit looser, so that some of the joints aren't as tight as I would like them to be, but all in all, the look is really nice. You got a nice Autobot logo right there. She's a little bit gappy from the side. You lift her arms up and you can see right through her. So that is a little unfortunate. But if you keep her arms down, I guess you don't really see it all that much. This is a completely new mold. It's not a remold or anything. And some people are already speculating that Hasbro really could take this and do a repaint and maybe a slight retool to create the slipstream. I could see it, but I wouldn't want it. Personally, I think this looks great as this character, and uh, Slipstream just looks too different. Now, for her weapon, uh, I'm not really seeing a lot of points on here where I could attach her uh, sword to her, like in the back or anything. Uh, you do have some little gaps right here that I think are just part of the actual molding. I don't think it's anything spectacular, but you can actually wedge this in there. So if you wanted to, you could have her uh, sword hang out there on the side. You can see that she holds it pretty well. And then they also have little points on here. Now that's the actual peg for the vehicle mold, but this one is a little bit more rounded where you can see that she can actually, if you slide this in there, get that in there and uh, there we go. You can actually have her holding her sword like that. 
which is neat. I, I, I kind of dig that. It's like she's walking into battle with it. And uh, that, again, you have to really get her legs kind of chicken backwards so that you can hold it because that kind of throws the balance off. Uh, Articulation-wise, she is a very well-articulated figure. Her head is on a swivel, looks left and right, but as part of the transformation, she also can look forward and back. The shoulders here are on ball joints, so you get a nice range of motion with those. They rotate at the upper part of the, the bicep. They bend here at the elbow. They also have have wrist articulation they rotate uh, they're a little bit stiff on this one but the wrists do rotate nicely she does rotate at the waist that was also part of the transformation she's got ball jointed hips they rotate at the upper part but because of the way this is you you see these little red bits that come up here kind of limits that are so you're not getting too much of a range of motion most of it is really coming from just the ball sort of rotating back uh, she does have only one point here at the knee and then I guess you could say that she's got ankle movement, the or heel, but <laughs> we'll say heel articulation. Uh, but really a terrific looking figure. I really am very impressed. I, I, like I said, I know that some people are not fans of how she looks. It is a unique kind of look that we really haven't gotten before. And we, we didn't necessarily pick this uh, Japanese sort of motif but I think it fits nicely with the characterization that we as fans picked. And I think the figure turned out great. Now for a transformation back, first we're going to start with the leg area. Get her arms kind of out of the way. Take the shins, collapse them up just like so. And then take the foot, rotate that around, take her heel, and then tuck that up just like so. Do that on this side as well. Fold that up, rotate this around and then fold her heel up. Then rotate the waist all the way around, and you're going to bring these two halves of her uh, tail fin thing, I guess. Collapse those together and they connect very nicely. Then come around here to the front, straighten out her head, then take the back section in the front, pull it apart, then take the head, rotate this, back and around. This whole section here you can see kind of flexes forward a little bit so that when you bring it down it actually goes back a little bit so that it leaves some room for actual head there. And then take this whole section and fold this down like so. Just straightening all this out. Pull these arms out. Get that out of the way. Make sure that this is rotated around properly. It kind of flops around. Then these hinges you want to bring that down and then hinge it up just like that. So bring that down like so. Then bring this whole section back here, straighten this, bring this flush with this bit back here. It's a little bit uh, floppy uh, kind of when you're going back. Uh, maybe it's just on mine. Hopefully it's just on mine because of the, the tolerances on here, but it it is a little bit of a floppy kind of mess going back to his or going back to her actual jet mode. Uh, bring these flaps down and then they tab along this side right here. And then why is this okay? Because that's not angled properly. You gotta make sure that that's properly angled up. Get that all the way up there. There we go, just like that. And then have that collapsed all the way down. Then bring these in that will make sure that you get that like i said completely lined up properly then you want to tab these sections down which uh, i was fiddling with rotate this down and you got little sort of tabs right here that her hands will grab onto so get that in the position grab those and angle that just like that make sure you twist everything and make sure everything is straight and properly aligned, then you can take her sword, come around here to the bottom, peg that on the underside as well, and uh, hook these little sections right here. You got these little bits. These On this one, it doesn't actually hook in very well. I think that's just a quality control thing, but again, this is directly from the factory, so it's not 100%, and the retail version will probably be much better. But there you have Windblade back in her VTOL jet mode. Now, all in all, for the very first fan-created figure, I really think that we did a pretty good job with it. And Hasbro did a nice job of incorporating those ideas into an actual figure. As I said, some people don't necessarily like the whole Japanese look, but based on the selections we picked, I think it works fairly well. Jet mode looks 
pretty decent. Uh, it is a little bit gappy, but I do really appreciate the uniqueness of this particular jet. It doesn't really look like anything that we've gotten before. The transformation to robot mode is a whole lot easier than going back to jet mode, but it's actually still fairly fun to do. The leg, the transformation itself, is actually pretty fun. The rest is fairly straightforward, but I think it's engineered very nicely. But the robot mode is where I really think that this figure shines. Despite the fact that I really don't like the way that her heels are, everything else looks terrific. The paint applications, the articulation, everything just really comes together very well with this. And I really hope that this figure sells well enough that Hasbro decides to do more of these sort of fan collaborations. What might hurt this is that not a lot of people know who this character is. And if you don't read the comics, you're not going to have any clue who this character is. Posting pictures of this on my Facebook, there were some people that were like, who is that? And we've had to explain who it is, but nonetheless, it's still a really good Transformer. As I said, of the new generations, this is the one that I was most excited for. And this is the one that I would recommend getting above any of the other ones. So if you are interested in picking her up, go ahead and click on the link down in the video description. You'll go to Big Bad Toy Store, where you can take a look at her and the other wave mates and decide what you would like to get. But beyond that, guys, that's about it. So once again, I want to thank you for tuning in. This has been Optobotomous. Don't forget that you can keep in touch with me by liking my Facebook page at facebook.com slash teambottomous and by following me over on Twitter at twitter.com slash optobotomous. Also, I'd encourage you to check out my new website at optobotomousreviews.com where you can see all my videos from the previous week as well as see what I have coming up for future release. And guys, I'd also really appreciate it that if you like this review to please thumbs up, comment, and share this video. And until next time, I'll talk to you later.